Hey photographers, my name is Spiros Heniatis and it's Tuesday. This is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. And we're still in the middle of editing this photo right here. However, we're taking a break from editing today to talk about Nikon's new D7200 DSLR camera. So first, I just wanna give you a comparison of the D7100 and the new D7200. And first of all, they are using a sensor that is almost the exact same size. The D7100 has a 24.1 megapixel sensor without an optical low pass filter, also called an anti aliasing filter. The D7200 is nearly identical. It is probably a slightly different sensor because it is 24.2 megapixels. So I hesitate to say that it's the exact same sensor. It could be, and maybe they tweak the sensor. I don't know. But it is basically the same size for megapixels. And in fact, the images you get from the D7200 will be the exact same size as the images you get from the D7100. Now they updated the image processor in the D7200. Instead of the Xpeed 3 processor that's used in the D7100, they bumped it up to the Xpeed 4 processor. And this gives you improvements in things like your shooting and burst modes, in your ISO performance and things like that. And that is reflected in the fact that the D7200 takes a two-stop bump in the native of ISO range. On the D7100, the maximum ISO available was ISO 6400. You can move into the high one and the high two modes to get 12.8 and 25,006, but those high one and high two modes are not native modes. Those are extrapolated modes and the quality on those was really, really poor. On the D7200, you can go up to 25,600 natively with your ISO, which means that you should get better low light performance with this. Now, I have no idea what 25,600 looks like on the D7200. I won't know until I manage to get my hands on one. But having that as a native ISO is a really nice thing. A two-stop bump is pretty impressive on a camera update. So that's something that's worth noting about the D7200. Now, after that, we've got the exact same number of autofocus points in both cameras. Both have 51 autofocus points with 15 of them being cross-type. However, the D7200 is using the same autofocus module that the D750 uses, which is the Multicam 3502DX51.0 autofocus sensor. This should give us improved autofocus performance, especially when it comes to tracking and moving subjects in continuous focus mode. So I'm excited to see how that performs because tracking focus is always something that is difficult to do with a camera. The other improvement, and this is something big because the D7000 and D7100 really suffered from this. Both cameras, the D7100 and the D7200, have a frame rate of six frames per second when shooting in burst mode, meaning that for every second you're shooting and holding down that button in burst mode, the camera will take six photos. However, the D7100 had a really weak camera buffer, which meant that you could only shoot 33 photos before the buffer would fill up and it would slow down to about three frames per second while the camera tried to write those images from the internal memory to the memory card. Now the D7200 has a very much improved buffer, allowing you to shoot up to 100 images before that buffer fills up and that frame rate slows down. That is triple the number of images in burst mode. That's a huge improvement. And that means that the D7200 moves into a contender category for people who like to shoot sports photography. Another new feature on the D7200 is a time-lapse mode. Now both the D7100 and the D7200 have an interval shooting mode, which is what's typically referred to as a time-lapse mode because that allows you to shoot a series of photos in a program manner, which then you later combine into a time-lapse video. The difference though is on the D7200, this time-lapse mode, as they're calling it, is designed to smooth exposure from shot to shot. A problem with time-lapse photography, especially when you shoot during light transitions. For instance, if you shoot sunrises or 
sun sets, when the light is changing, is you get something called exposure flickering, which looks like this, where you can see the change in exposure as flickers in the video because it's not a perfectly smooth transition of light between the shots. Now, I don't know how well it's going to work on the D7200, but what it's designed to do is eliminate that flickering in the video for you, rather than you having to do it at the computer using extra software tools, spending extra time to make your time-lapse video look good. So to me, this is a really exciting feature because I have not seen this implemented very effectively in a camera. And to have that, if you shoot time-lapse video, is something that's really exciting. Um, as far as connectivity goes, the D7100 had Wi-Fi. The D7200 also has Wi-Fi, but it also added NFC, or Near Field Communication, for quick connection to cell phones for apps or file transfers and things like that. So those are the main differences between the D7100 and the D7200 in terms of still photos. So now let's take a look at the video. And on the D7100, one of the things that was lacking is being able to shoot in full 1080p at 60 or 50 frames per second. On the D7100, you could shoot in 1080i, but many people don't really like 1080i because the interlaced process of creating video is not actually as high quality as the progressive method, which gives you better quality and better output. Now, the D7200 has introduced 1080p at 60 and 50 frames per second. What's interesting about this, though, is that it uses the camera's built-in 1.3 3x crop mode. Now this crop mode was something that was introduced on the D7100 for still photos, which allows you to get better autofocus point coverage on your photos and effectively extend the reach of your lenses by cropping the image in camera as you're taking it. On the D7200, this is being applied to video to allow you to shoot 1080p at 60 and 50 frames per second. You're still getting full 1080p HD video. You're just using a smaller area of the sensor to capture that video. And for whatever reason, that's how Nikon decided to implement shooting these higher frame rates of 60 and 50 frames per second on the D7200. Beyond that, the frame rates and the video modes are pretty standard and almost identical. On the D7100, you could shoot 1080p at 30, 25, and 24 frames per second, and you get the exact same thing on the D7200. Also on the D7100, you could shoot 720p at 60 frames per second and 50 frames per second, and you have the exact same option on the D7200. The other main difference in video is the fact that the D7200 has an auto ISO feature while recording video. Now this is something that is actually quite exciting. When it comes to still photos, I don't use auto ISO because I want to know when I set my exposure, it stays where it is. But with video, this is something that is different and exciting because with video recording, you are sometimes recording in changing light. And that can really muck up your video exposure because you might set the exposure for one lighting scenario, and then a minute later, the lighting changes, whether it's a plan change because of the creative video you're making, or the lighting scenario just changes and you have no control over that. What the D7200 does with this auto ISO feature in video is automatically adjust the ISO to maintain even exposure throughout your video, regardless of the lighting change. This is a really exciting video feature in my opinion, and something that I really look forward to seeing and playing with when I get my hands on a D7200 camera. Now the D7200 is retailing for $1,200, and that's body only price. And I looked up today on Amazon, and the Nikon D7200 is currently retailing for $1,000 body only. So the question is, who should buy the D7200? Now, if you have the D7000 or the D7100, I don't think it's absolutely necessary for you to upgrade, generally speaking. But there are a few scenarios where if you're using a D7000 or a D7100, you might want to consider upgrading. First of all, when I say that, you should know that if you're using one of those cameras or another camera and it is suiting your needs as is, and you have not maximized the potential of that camera that you're using, I don't recommend you upgrade. I never recommend a person upgrade just to upgrade to a newer, better camera. It is far better for you as a photographer to really, really know how to use your camera to its absolute maximum potential before you upgrade into a new one. Now that being said, if you're using like a D7000 or a D7100 and you shoot sports, 
and you found that buffer on that camera to be lacking, the D7200 would be a very worthy upgrade for you. Being able to shoot up to 100 JPEGs before that burst mode slows down is a huge advantage when you're shooting sports photography. So that's definitely an option for upgrading. If you shoot a lot of time lapse and you want to use that exposure smoothing feature, that is something that could make it worth upgrading. Now we have no idea how well that feature actually works, so I can't say yes you should upgrade to the D7200, but it is certainly something that would make me think about it if I shoot a lot of time lapse and it does a good job of smoothing out that exposure. And then the other reason would be if you shoot a lot of video in tricky lighting conditions where you're constantly having to fiddle with your exposure. Because that auto exposure option that was added in video mode could really help make your job easier when recording video. In short, the Nikon D7200 is an excellent camera, just as the D7100 is an excellent camera, and the D7000. It is essentially a spec bump camera. There's no super amazing features on here, but there are definitely some nice features that were added to the D7200. And until I can get my hands on one and test one, we'll have to content ourselves with that. So if you have any questions about the D7200 or cameras in general, let me know down in the comments. And then, do me a favor, would you like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you really like this video, maybe share it with your friends. But the most important thing to do is get out there with whatever camera you have and take some damn photos. I'll see you on Thursday for our Q&A. Hey photographers, I just wanted to let you know that I'm taking my Mastering Portrait Photography Workshop on the road. It's going to be a ton of fun. The first workshop is March 21st, 2015 here in my hometown of Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. And the second is in October of 2015. I'm coming to the UK for all you photographers across the pond. So if you're interested, check out these links right here.